Hello, this is Dawad of Israel Awake, and welcome to another installment of a collection of videos called Reflections. In this reflection series, we do just that. We reflect on a biblical point of interest or perhaps something topical, something that's happened in the news, whatever the case may be, we take the opportunity to reflect on it. Okay, uh, it's, uh, it's a bite-sized video, so um, on average, it's uh, about half an hour, give or take. All right, so smaller than some of my more lengthier videos. All right, so in this particular video, um, I'd like to reflect on the holy days, the biblical holy days. Um, so being a reflections video, I'm not going to go too in depth, but enough to give us an overview of the holy days. All right. And for those of you who are not aware of them, to give you a good introduction to the holy days. And for those who are aware of them, perhaps shed a little bit more light on it for you as well. All right. And then going forward in other videos, I will do more in depth videos on the holy days themselves. It, it, you know, it, it, probably each holy day will warrant a video in and of itself. All right. So uh, the purpose behind this uh, video, as I say, is to just give you a brief overview. Okay. Um, let me just uh, share my screen with you uh, so that I can get some slides on screen that I prepared for you. Okay, let's do this. All right. Okay, okay, excellent. Okay, so as you can see on the screen then, an overview of the holy days. Okay, as I say, my name is Dawad uh, of Israel Awake. Okay, uh, just quickly then. Um, this information, as I always say, is, is to go out there. My role um, is to get this information out there, to spread the good news, to spread the word. All right. So um, no man can come to me except the father which has sent me draw him and I will raise him up at the last day. You can see that on the screen. That's the, um, the book of John, chapter six, verse 44. The words of our Messiah, of our King, Yahweh Shai. All right. So that's where. Um, that's for him to do. That's for the father to do. That's beyond me. My sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. Again, the words of the Messiah. Okay. Those who are his sheep will hear him. If, if you're not his sheep, um, you won't hear him. That's way beyond my control, uh, way beyond my remit. All right. The only thing I would say is please do give this video a fair hearing. Okay. Because um, we're dealing with things and material where it might be completely outside of what you're, what you're used to, all right? So bear with it, um, hear the content out, okay? Uh, and then, you know, then take it from there, yeah? So that's what I would say. Okay, let's move on. Okay, so for many of you who may be going to, you know, today's churches, okay? Uh, many of you will be familiar with the if today's church calendar, if you like, the calendar of events. All right. Um, so I've taken some uh, from of uh, 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 well, some of the wording, some of the summaries from a website, um, Bolton University website. Actually, I've given the um, the source reference a, a little bit later on. Um, but let's have a look. Advent Sunday. Yeah, most people would have heard of that one, Advent Sunday. Advent Sunday is the start of the Christian year. And in the Western churches, it's four Sundays before Christmas. The Advent season continues until Christmas. So uh, some of you may be observing this and have done so for years. Okay, moving on. All Hallows Day. Yeah, M more, more commonly known today as All Saints Day. Yeah, the 1st of November. Again, All Saints Day is a festival on the 1st of November when many Western Christian churches honour and give thanks for both known and unknown saints. All right, some of you will be aware of that. And a lot of you will be aware that the day before that is actually Halloween, right, which, which uh, actually meant Hallowed Eve. Yeah, the Eve before All Saints Day. All right, but we're not going to go too deep in, in, into any of this, so I'll move on. Ascension Day, okay. Many of you will be familiar with this uh, as well. Uh, Ascension Day marks the belief that Christ ascended to heaven after he was resurrected on Easter Day. Okay. Uh, moving on. Christmas Day. Everybody um, is familiar with this one. All right. The 25th of December, of course, in Western, uh, in Western um, Christendom. All right. 
The 25th of December is the time when Western Christians celebrate the birth of Jesus, who Christians believe to be both the Messiah, yeah, Christ, the Son of God, divine. Eastern Orthodox Christians celebrate the birth on the 7th of January, yeah, like the Ethiopian Orthodox Church celebrates on the 7th of January, okay? But that's Christmas Day. Epiphany, the 6th of January. Epiphany is a Greek word meaning to show and also marks the end of the 12 days of Christmas. Yeah, it's one of the reasons why some people keep their, um, if you like, uh, trees up until the 12th day, the cards up, Christmas cards up, decorations will stay up for 12 days. Well, that this goes back to the observance of Epiphany. All right, 12 days of Christmas in Western Christian churches. Uh, the Feast of the Epiphany celebrates the showing of Jesus to the Gentiles. All right, again, I'm not going to go too in depth there. Good Friday. Most people have heard of this one because it's part of the, the whole Easter observance. All right. Good, Fr Good Friday commemorates the death of Jesus by crucifixion and is called good because of Jesus' example of sacrificial love by giving his life for the healing of the world. So we get this observance of Good Friday. A, a lot of people, anybody who goes to church will, will, will know this one. All right. Um, who goes to today's, most of today's churches. Okay. Lent and Ash Wednesday. Um, not all denominations will do this. Um, I know, for example, the Roman Catholics most certainly do. Um, so Lent and Ash Wednesday. Lent is a time when Christians prepare for Easter, okay, by focusing more on prayer and spiritual studies and occasionally by going out without food, fasting, yeah? Lent lasts 40 days, uh, a, sig a significant number in Jewish Christian scriptures and is the period which the Gospels record that Jesus spent fasting at the start of his ministry. Okay, so many people will be familiar with that. Okay, Mothering Sunday. Um, so a lot of people don't realize that actually the origins behind uh, Mothering Mother's Day actually um, has its origins in um, Roman Catholicism, all right, where Mothering Sunday is the fourth Sunday of the Christian period of Lent and is very different from the um, American festival of Mother's Day because the, yeah, there's two separate Mother's Day. I won't go through that now. Um, centuries ago, once a year, people returned to their home or mother church, and that's how we got this Mother's Day. It wasn't originally to do with your actual maternal mother, as in the woman who gave you birth. It was to do with the mother church. Uh, and, and, and the way we've been observing it now in the, in, 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 you know, in, in the UK um, and for Europe, okay, um, and because people were going back to the, you know, originally, back in the day, people would go to their mother church, and all, all the young people, yeah, would stop what they were doing. So because a lot of young people used to go out to work and work outside of the towns in which they grew up, uh, would return to their hometowns. Um, it was a time for gathering uh, and for seeing your mother. So your, the maternal mother, if you like, became intertwined with the whole observance of returning to your mother church. Because if you were going to return to your mother church, you were, you were returning to your hometown, you were going to see your mum again. All right. Anyway, um, I'm not going to get too deep into that. So the sources for this is, I've taken this from uh, Christian Festivals and Holy Days from the University of Bolton, and I'm using this purely for educational purposes uh, to make reference to, all right? So um, there are other days, as we know, uh, which are not necessarily seen as, if you like, typical church days, uh, but uh, a lot of them are secular uh, anyway, but um, I, I put them in here to make the point. So for example, we know of New Year's Day for the 1st of January, yeah? Uh, birthday cakes and candles. Yeah, this has an origin to it as well. Everything has a story to it, a narrative, an origin. Yeah, Halloween, as I was saying, the day be before um, All Saints Day. Okay, so why, why do I mention these days? Well, I'm mentioning these days because these days have found themselves pretty much into most people's uh, calendars um, and practice, if you like. Um, and without thinking about it, we, we, people pretty much assume that there must be maybe a biblical origin. And I'm talking to my brothers and sisters who, 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 who are currently involved with some of the churches that, you know, that push these days, if you like. All right. Fact of the matter is, none of these days are commandments from the Most High for us to observe. Now, does that mean that, um, you know, it's bad to observe anything because it's not being commanded? Not necessarily. But there's an issue with these days, um, a lot of these days. Uh, for starters, 
a lot of them have their pagan, have their origins, um, a bit of a slip there, a lot of them have their origins in paganism. Paganism is obviously alternative uh, wisdom traditions and belief structures, yeah, um, observing other deities as opposed to the God of Israel, the Alahayam of Yasharal. Now, as Israelites, okay, we serve one God and one God only. And we do not borrow from other, um, if you like, religions or traditions or customs when it comes to, um, uh, you know, observing our deity, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, okay? It's been prescribed. We, we don't have to make it up. It was hand delivered to us by the Most High himself. He, he teaches us how he wishes to be worshipped. He teaches us how, uh, how and what we should observe. All right. Now, as I say, this is just a brief overview. So uh, each one of these things could go, I could go into depth on. All right. But this, this is just to give us that awareness that, that we do. That there are these days that people are observing without realizing. Nobody says, pause, wait a minute. Why are we doing this? Often it's a tradition that's been handed down from generation to generation. And we do that. You know, people do develop emotional attachments to these things because maybe they're your dear old mother or grandmother. You know, it brings up, sometimes it can invoke fond memories, family gatherings, you know, I get that, all right? But it um, doesn't have its ori origins in the scriptures. This is the thing. So anyway, let's, let's, let's keep moving. Okay, so let's, let's hear what the scripture has to say about these alternative days, these extra biblical um, days, if you like. Mark chapter seven, verse nine. And he said unto them, this is the Messiah speaking, and he said unto them, full well, ye reject the commandment of God, that ye may keep your own tradition. Full well, ye reject the commandment of God, that ye may keep your own tradition. You see, in these days, we have to be so careful that we're keeping the commandments of God and not just our own traditions, all right? At the expense of the, the Most High and his commandments. Let's have a look at another scripture. Here's Acts chapter five, verse 29, yeah? Then Peter and the other apostles answered, answered and said, we ought to obey God rather than men. We ought to obey God rather than men, okay? Let's get another powerful scripture up. Matthew chapter 15, verse nine. Again, the words of the Messiah, Yahweh Shai. But in vain do they worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. Now that's a very serious uh, verse. Because the Messiah, our King, our Savior, is saying people worship him in vain. That means it's not going to come to anything. It won't profit us anything if we're worshiping him based on the commandments of men. And see, this is the thing behind these days. They may sound good. You may think, well, what's the harm? Well, according to the scriptures, you see, the harm is these days are being observed, but not the actual days that God commanded. And that's what we, we just want to get. Uh, I want to reflect on that with you in this video. What are these days that God has commanded? Yeah, because that's what we should be observing, as opposed to these days that actually don't have their origins in scripture. What are the precepts and the doctrines and the commandments of men? Let's go. Let's have a look. So biblical holy days then. So for that, um, we do find a lot of the biblical holy days actually listed, um, well, an, an exhaustive list of the holy days in the 23rd ch chapter of Leviticus. All right. What I'm going to do, let's, um, let's go there now. Let's go to Leviticus chapter 22. And I'm going to start from verse 1. So I'm going to read from verse 1. All right. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto Aaron and to his sons, that they separate themselves from the holy things of the children of Israel, and that they profane not my holy name in, in these things, which they hallow unto me. Um, sorry, I think I'm in the wrong chapter here. I don't want to get to chapter 23. My apologies. Bear with me one moment. Right, this is what I want. Actually, chapter 23. Um, Leviticus chapter 23, is again, starting from verse 1. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel and say unto them concerning the feasts of the Lord, 
Yeah. Now the term here using for, 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 for feasts is moed. Yeah, and it's appointed times. Right. Concerning the feasts of the Lord, which ye shall proclaim to be holy convocations. So a time when you gather, you don't do this on your lonesome. If you have a, if you know of anybody else who's of like mind, you should be assembling. Yeah, at these days. Even these are my feasts. And as I say, the, the Hebrew is moed, which is for appointed times. Right. So it starts with the weekly Sabbath. Six days shall work be done, but the seventh is the Sabbath of rest. And holy convocation, ye shall do no work therein. It is the Sabbath of the Lord in all your dwellings. So it starts with the weekly Sabbath. But then after commanding the weekly Sabbath, it then goes on to command annual holy days. Nowhere in Leviticus chapter 23 will you find Christmas. Easter, Day of Ascension, all the other days that I brought out at the beginning of this video, they're not listed because they are not the commandments of the Almighty. All right, we need to be getting back to the commandments of the Almighty. All right, we as a people fell because we stopped keeping the commandments of the Almighty. Yeah, it's so important for us. Okay, so um, it starts with the weekly Sabbath. All right. Uh, then verse four of chapter 23. These are the feasts of the Lord, even holy convocations, which you shall proclaim in their seasons. In the 14th day of the first month at even is the Lord's Passover. All right. So we've got Passover. Now, as I say, each feast will need its own video. OK. And, uh, and you know, I, I, I do intend to do that. All right. So do keep a lookout for that. All right. But for now, just to say the first annual day of the year is the Passover. OK, it's the Passover. Um, so I've got it here, Passover. OK, um, now it's actually one of the days, if it begins the whole period of the days of unleavened bread. All right. Um, so let's look at it. In fact, let me go back up here. So Passover, Leviticus 23, verse 5. Yeah, we just read that. But I want to show you some um, New Testament um, verses that correspond to it as well. All right. So the Passover. Now, for those of you who don't know, um, the Passover got its name. And I'm not going to go there now. But the, the angel of death, when we were in captivity in Egypt, yeah, in the first captivity um, in Egypt, the angel of death passed over us. But it only passed over us, our, our, our homes, if we had obeyed God's commandment to sacrifice a lamb and to put the blood of that lamb on the doorposts, yeah, of our homes and on the top of, you know, on the, around about the door of, of, of our homes. All right. So those who didn't keep that commandment, those who didn't observe that, wouldn't have been spared when the angel of death came to smite the firstborn of Egypt. All right. So that's what the term came from. All right. But actually, the lamb that we sacrificed back then was a type. It was a substitute, a precursor, if you like, to the ultimate sacrifice that would come, which would be the Messiah himself. All right. So um, it's a day that he observed the day. That's why he was. That's what the Last Supper was. That Last Supper was the Passover meal. They were keeping Passover as they did every year. All right. So uh, let's go over to Matthew chapter 26, verse one. And it came to pass when I'm using um, the blue letter Bible online Bible. Yeah. The King James version of it. And it came to pass when Jesus had finished all these sayings, he said unto his disciples, ye know that after two days is the feast of the Passover. And the son of man is betrayed to be crucified. This is a very revealing verse, verse two of Matthew chapter 26, because what it's showing you is that in the Messiah's mind, he knew what the Passover was all about. The Passover for him, he knew that he was going to be the fulfillment of it. So he knew the Passover was coming, so therefore he was going to be crucified. Did you see that? Do you catch that? Yeah. Matthew chapter six, verse 20, chapter 26, verse two. He know that after two days is the feast of the Passover and the son of man is, is betrayed to be crucified. To, one and the same to him. He, know, he knew he was the Passover lamb. All right. He, he knew what his mission was. All right. So um, 
let's look at first corinthians let me go over to first corinthians all right i'll put it in here uh first corinthians chapter 5 verse 7 all right this will make it even clearer okay good enough first corinthians chapter 5 verse 7 purge out therefore the old leaven notice how paul is using the terms leaven because passover and leaven, and leaven bread are of the same period of time yeah purge out therefore the old leaven that ye may be a new lump as ye are unleavened for even christ our passover is sacrificed for us do you see that yeah so passover back in the day you see these days remember the old testament is the new testament concealed the new testament is the old testament revealed so in the old testament we, we there we are you know if you like sacrificing a lamb well the the, the fulfillment of that is the messiah yahweh himself as the sacrifice he's the passover lamb so this is why we observe this is why we are commanded to observe this because it's the it's the very beginning yeah of if you like the whole narrative of our salvation yeah your our salvation begins with the sac without the sacrifice of of of, of yahweh shai we, we we're, we're still we're doomed still in our sins yeah the sins are still the, the curse is still poured out on us yeah uh without any hope all right so the very first step if, if you think about in the master plan of salvation is the messiah's sacrifice that's why it's the very first day annual day in the calendar yeah the very first annual holy day all right um so we've seen that okay so it feeds into the days of unleavened bread yeah and you see that in leviticus chapter 23 verse 6 um let's go to 23 leviticus chapter 23 and as as you can see verse 5 was the passover moving on into 20 verse 6 and on the 15th day, so Passover, the 14th day, yeah, of the first month, which is Abib, which is not January, by the way, it's a spring month, right? So first month, Abib, 14th, the following day, the 15th, verse 6. And on the 15th, 15th day of the same month is the Feast of Unleavened Bread unto the Lord. Seven days ye must eat unleavened bread, all right? So we've had the Passover. Yeah, which is Yahweh Shai. Yeah, saving us from our sins. All right. Then we're told to eat unleavened bread seven days. All right. So why do that? Well, um, again, remember, uh, let's go to the New Testament, the Old Testament revealed. Okay. So let's go to Matthew 26 again. All right. And let's go down to verse 17. Yeah. Now, the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the disciples came to Jesus, saying unto him, Where will thou that we prepare for to eat the Passover? So that's making it very clear that the disciples and the Messiah kept these days. All right? Um, yeah. Um, but what's the teaching behind it? Okay. Well, let's go to 1 Corinthians. Yeah, as written here. 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 68. Let's have a look at that. Let's see what we can glean from it. First Corinthians chapter five, and let's go to verse six. Um, right. Your glory is not good. Know ye not that a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump? Look at the analogy here. Look at the use of language here. Yeah. Purge out therefore, like we read earlier, purge out therefore the old leaven, that ye may be a new lump. As, yeah. So we, we be, so we we are the we are the, the, the bread, if you like. Yeah. Purging out the old leaven. The leaven is a type of sin. It's symbolic of sin. So the Feast of Unleavened Bread is all about um, only eating leavened bread, which is seen as, if you like, the sinless bread. Yeah? yeah? Only for this time of year, by the way, it's okay to eat leaven any other time of the year, but it becomes very symbolic during the Days of Unleavened Bread. So that's what the Days of Unleavened Bread are all about. It's about, you've now been saved from sin, so you don't dwell in sin, come out from it. Now that you're saved from it, come out from it. So that's what the days of unleavened bread are all about, all right? So purge out, therefore, the old leaven, in verse 7 of 1 Corinthians chapter 5, that ye may be a new lump, as ye are unleavened. But even Christ, our Passover, uh, is sacrificed for us, okay? Look at verse 8. Therefore, let us keep the feast. And it's talking about the feast of unleavened bread, because that's the context. Therefore, let us keep the feast. So we're supposed to be keeping it. Therefore, let us keep the feast, not with the old leaven, 
neither with the leaven of malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Do you see that? Do you see how in the Old Testament, um, it was the actual, you know, it's, it's, it's the bread. In the New Testament, it, it, it gives us more of, a, of, a, of the, the meaning behind it. Do you see how it's coming to the fore? Okay. These days, you see, when we don't keep these days, we're missing the master plan of salvation. These days are supposed to be kept to keep us in, keep us in constant memory, a constant yearly reminder of what God is doing for us what the plan is the, the holy days are a blueprint of the master plan of salvation it actually explains you get the storyline these days aren't random the, the father didn't say do these days because i just fancy i just feel like it it's it's symbolic of a, of, 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 a, of a truth and the truth is the master plan of salvation all right so um these are the days of unleavened bread i'm not going to labor the point now because uh, as i say there will be other videos where we'll go in depth on these days all right okay so first fruits okay that's also um another day you see that in leviticus chapter 23 verse 9 to 11 yeah not going to go into it now but basically the first fruits um we're all about the first fruits the harvest it's, it's basically a harvest festival yeah but but then when you get into the new testament the, the revelation of that is that actually christ was the first fruit the firstborn of many brethren okay in terms of being resurrected okay and the elect those are the, the chosen the elect today anybody who uh, who is responding and awakening today are also seen as first fruits okay anybody who awakens this side of you, you, how shall i return is seen as the first fruits all right so i've got some scripture references here i'm not going to go into it now all right but if you want to read about the actual day the origin of the day that's leviticus 23 verse 9 to 11 um, and if you want to learn a little bit more about first fruits themselves, um, have a look at like Romans 8, 23 and verse 29. But as I say, I will be doing more in-depth videos, you know, and having an in-depth look at that. All right. But basically the storyline then, Passover, you're saved from your sins. Days of unleavened bread, it's not a license to sin. Come away from sin. First fruits, well, if you're coming away from sin, you're now considered a first fruit. You see, it's, it's a blueprint for the master plan of salvation. It's followed then by Pentecost, okay? Again, um, some call it Whitson, some call it, it's the Feast of Weeks, all right? Um, you find reference to that in Leviticus chapter 23, verses 15 to 16, all right? You find um, that it was observed. Everybody's heard of the day of Pentecost because the day when the Holy Spirit came down in Acts chapter 2, for example, yeah, that famous scene and coming down, the Holy Spirit coming down upon the heads of the disciples as flames of fire and then them speaking in tongues, yeah, and in special tongue, in, 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 in very high power tongues, everybody could hear them and understand them in their own language, all right? But why were they gathered together in the first place? because they were keeping the Feast of Pentecost. You see, these days have not been done away with. Yeah, the confusion is when you get to Leviticus, sometimes you'll find reference to animal sacrifice. Well, we don't engage in animal sacrifice. In fact, as we saw, Yahushai himself was the ultimate sacrifice. He is the Passover lamb, for example, all right? So we don't do that today. We couldn't do it if we even, even if we wanted to because we don't have the temple, all right? But we don't do that today okay um but you don't throw the day out along with the sacrifices just because we don't do the sacrifices doesn't mean you don't keep the day yeah especially when you begin to understand the fulfillment in the days in which we're living in the fulfillment of the days the very meaning behind the days all right so pentecost if you're first fruit you see you're then given extra measure of the father's own holy spirit you see that's what Pentecost is all about. Um, this is then, now, now these days have already come and gone for those who are, don't keep these holy days. We've already had Passover, yeah? That was um, in the month of Abib. So you were, you were talking roughly around, around April of this year, yeah? Um, we've had the days of unleavened bread. We've had the, fe the, the feast of the first fruits. We've had Pentecost, all right? The next um, holy day to come is this one here, the feast of trumpets, yeah, the memorial of the blowing of trumpets. Um, that's on, that's on 
well, we'll be observing that at Israel Awake. We'll be observing that on Sunday, the 18th of September. Okay, it's on the new moon day. Yeah, uh, it's on new moon day. Now, some people, depending on how people measure and do their calculations, it, it can differ by a day or so. All right. Uh, for example, some people go by the dark moon. All right, the absolute eclipse of the moon, the complete eclipse of the moon, which is you know the beginning of the new moon. However, we go by the beginning of light, the first glimmer of light, which is normally the following day after the complete eclipse of the moon. Don't worry if you don't understand what I'm talking about. We're going to be looking at that in more depth in forthcoming videos. All right. But just to say that the Feast of Trumpets then is the memorial of the blowing of trumpets. Why is this important? Well, historically speaking in Israel, we always blew trumpets. We were told to blow trumpets for various reasons, to give a warning normally, yeah? To give a warning um, or some major event, yeah? Heralding some major event, okay? Well, the, a, a major event is about to happen. You see, we're waiting for the prophetical, the, the sounding of the last trumpet, yeah? Which will basically um, be a sign of the return of our king. Yeah, Yahweh Shai. All right. So, um, and at that point, we will be changed. Yeah, we're going to be upgraded, if you like, from this mortal coil to immortality. All right. Um, for some, it may sound fantastical. Okay. Well, let me tell you, the Bible has a 100% accuracy rate when it comes to um, biblical prophecy. Yeah. So, if this has been prophesied, it will come to pass. It's a, if you do the, the, the study, like I've said in previous videos, cross reference between biblical prophecy and historical events, you will be amazed, all right? So that's the, what the Feast of Trumpets is all about. I've left the scriptures on the, on, the, on the screen, but I'm not gonna go into there now. That's not the purpose behind this particular video, all right? It's just to give you uh, an overview. Okay, so trumpets then. Uh, so let's just backtrack, if you like. In fact, I'm gonna take the sixth one off. So Passover, it's all about the fact that the Messiah came to, 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 to deal with your sins. All right, days of unleavened bread. His blood is not a license to sin. You come away from it. You make go the necessary changes in your life. You realign your, 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 your priorities in line with the Father's will. It's no longer just about you. It's no longer just about your, the needs of your flesh and the, and, the, and, the, and the appetite of your ego. All right, it's about now, it's all about the Father's will. Yeah, seeking first his kingdom and his righteousness. All right, so days of unleavened bread, that's what we're acting up, that's what we're living out. All right, and that's what, what we're remembering when we keep these days. First fruits, that makes you a first fruit. All right, because many called, but few are chosen. All right, that makes you one of the first fruits, one of the early harvest. You see, the first fruits is just that the first fruits, the beginning of the, the, the early um, harvest. All right. Pentecost then. Now, if you're first fruit, the Father promises to fill you with his Holy Spirit. Yeah, it's a deposit for eternal life and will aid you and assist you in this walk. All right. And then, of course, if you've got that deposit of the, of the Holy Spirit, then when the trumpet sounds, okay, you will, yeah, you will um, be gathered around the Messiah. All right. So it's powerful stuff, right? And that's what the Feast of Trumpets is all about. That then takes us to the Day of Atonement, okay? Which occurs 10 days after the Feast of Trumpets, all right? The Day of Atonement. Uh, and with the Day of Atonement, that's a, a day of deflicting of, your, of our souls. So it's a day of fasting. We fast on the Day of Atonement, okay? Uh, and again, there's umpteen scriptures um, that show that the, that the Messiah kept this, yeah? Yahweh Shai kept this. The disciples kept these days. All right. Um, so we should. We should be keeping it. All right. If you if you do the histor historical research as to when these days fell out of practice, you'll find that it's um, it's there was so much corruption and falsehood. All right. Anyway. Um, and then the seventh and final one. And anybody who knows prophetic, prophetic symbolism will know that seven is the number of completeness. All right. So we get down to the Feast of Tabernacles, otherwise known as booth. A, a tabernacle is a booth, all right? So it's interchangeable terms. Okay, yeah? Again, listed in the book of Leviticus, yeah? And this is, it's actually symbolic of the fact that we're ears to the coming kingdom. 
yeah? Um, so we're into the coming kingdom, and um, it's, um, Yahweh Shai kept it, yeah? You see, if he's keeping it, we should be keeping it. He sets the example. He sets the, he's the trend, he's, he's the trendsetter. He's the, the, the standard, surely, that we should be living by, all right? Um, so if the disciples, if the Messiah kept these days and the, uh, the disciples kept these days, how did we end up today with churches that don't keep these days, but actually keep days that are rooted in paganism for the most part? Well, there's a reason for that. All right. Some of you will know some of that history. For example, you know, Emperor Constantine and the Council of Nicaea in 325 Anno Domini. Yeah. Um, so um, some of you will know some of the other um, church synods, yeah, that took place, yeah, which basically dismantled the, 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 the Israelite input into these things, yeah, and basically constructed a brand new version of Christianity, yeah. Um, so the, the, the history is deep, uh, and we will be looking at these things going forward, all right. So again, I just want to just want to recap on that, all right. So we've got seven days pretty much okay um listed out in the 23rd chapter of leviticus yeah the commandments of god the days that he wants to uh, wants us to keep and still wants us to keep um some will say it's done away with well i've done previous videos on this argument of god's laws being done away with uh, and you know i'm uh, i'm looking forward to um doing other videos on these days alone because there's so much more to come out so for example take the defeat of tabernacles do you know, for future prophecies of the coming kingdom, it's clear that the Feast of Tabernacles will need to be kept? Why would God throw out today, only to then have to restore it when Christ returns? Answer, it never was thrown away. Yeah? You'd have to look through the, the, the if you like, the, the, the Roman church archives and, 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 and other um, books to see what really happened and we'll, we'll, we'll do that going forward all right but passover it, it, i can't stress enough that these days collectively illustrate and illuminate the master plan of salvation it's clear that the reason you see there's always a purpose and a reason behind why god wants us to do what he wants us to do nothing's random and senseless these are not senseless days these are not days without meaning and without purpose, all right? It keeps us constantly in, 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 in tune and, and if you like cognizant, yeah? And mindful of what the Father is doing, all right? So Passover, yeah? Saved from your sins, but not a license to sin. Therefore, you come out from the leaven of sin. Yeah, that's what the days of unleavened bread are all about, right? That makes you a first fruit, okay? That's what the first fruits is all about. You then receive the, 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 the indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit, yeah? The Kwadash, Kwadash Rocha in the Peyo Hebrew, all right? That's what Pentecost was all about. That then means that you're now in line, you're on the right track, yeah, for being gathered by the Messiah, at the trumpet, at the sounding of that great trumpet, the last trump, all right? So that's what the Feast of Trumpets is all about, yeah? And then Day of Atonement. If you look at that word atonement, it can be split up into three words, at one meant, yeah? At one meant, where you become at one now, you see, at one with God, yeah? Complete reconciliation, all right? And as I say, when we do more in-depth videos, we'll look, we'll look at that so that you get a good and clear understanding of what I'm referring to here. All right. So Day of Atonement at one. And then um, Feast of Tabernacles, Booths, the Kingdom. That's what, and that's the, if you like, that's the ultimate goal, isn't it? For this world government as we understand it today, world governance as we see it today, yeah, to be replaced with the Kingdom of the Almighty. All right, so just a brief, brief, uh, a brief overview there. All right, um, I've probably gone a, a little bit fast with all that content. So you know, you know, you can always go back, look at the video, pause where you need to, make notes where you need to. Yeah, and then uh, as I say, there will be forthcoming videos.
happening. So I just wanted to reflect on that because it's so important because I'm aware that some people um, are wanting to know about the holy days. All right. So the next one coming up, as I say, is the Feast of Trumpets, Sunday, the 18th of September. So what um, I'm going to, yeah, so I'll, I'll either be doing a, probably doing a video, you know, before that one. So we've got more of an in-depth understanding of what that day is. All right. Um, so um, I'm, I'm hoping to be able to do that. All right. But God willing, yeah, most high willing. All right. I'm going to leave it there. All right. Um, so as I'll put here, um, the adversary has always tried to, to stop us from obeying the most high's laws. Yeah. So let's not let that happen. Yeah. So think about it. Pray about it. OK, if you're uh, if this is new to you, think about it. Pray about it. All right. All right. And um, like I say, if you've got anything that you'd um, like um, us to know, anything you want to share, you've got any questions or anything like that, please um, send us an email. Yeah. Israelawaken7 at gmail.com. Okay, please subscribe to this YouTube channel. As I, as I say, I do want to keep videos coming. All right, so please do sus subscribe and do click on all notifications. Yes, yeah? so when you click on the bell, opt for all notifications to ensure that you do receive all notifications. And please like the video if it's done, you know, if you've got something from this and please share. All right, because the aim is for us to all be co-workers together. The harvest is ready, but the, the, the labor is a few. Yeah. So let's, let's, you know, let's get this word out there. All right. Let's work together on this. Let's be co-workers. Co all right. So um, I hope you enjoyed this um, installment of Reflections. OK. Um, and I look forward to um, uploading uh, other videos going forward. All the very best. Um, I pray that the Father keep you, keep you in full joy, good health, happiness, safety, security and prosperity in his late last days. Yeah, keep the faith and keep the commandments as well, all right? Kwam Yasharal, that's Pelia Hebrew for Rise Israel. Bye for now.